I'm glad you joined me today because today we're going to do a fantastic little seascape, and I think you'll like that. Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Bob Ross, The Art of Chill. This is a painting game based on the popular PBS here in America artist Bob Ross. You, every kid growing up in the 80s probably knew who Bob Ross was or at least had seen him. Remember, Beautiful, fluffy clouds. This is a game based on him that's mass market that you should absolutely bet your hundred dollars that this game will fail. The only problem is, is you would lose your money. This is actually a very good light little thematic game about painting these paintings with Bob Ross. The theme really sticks in the game. I feel like I'm doing it. It's set collection. I think Ticket to Ride, but it works in this aspect where you're trying to get these three parts of the painting painted before Bob Ross moves on to the next one. So it almost feels like you're painting along with the television, but you can get a little bit of a head if you know what you're doing. You can also upgrade your technique so you can get better at that. The game just works. Now, this is light. It's not paper light like a mass market, but it's light. Ticket to Ride sound light. It's a gateway game. It's going to work with a lot of people. I like the theme. I think the theme works with this. I feel like I'm painting. I like building my palettes and mixing the colors together and having to wash it if I need to move on to something else. The theme loses a little bit when somebody else finishes the painting and now you got to move on, but it kind of replicates like you watching it on television and he's done, so you got to move on because you didn't have a VCR or TiVo back then. You couldn't rewind it. You had to go with the flow, and that's how it was watching Bob Ross back in the day. This one really strikes me. I like set collection. I like building the pain and putting all that together and then scoring the chill points. You want to end the game being the one with the most chill. I am going to recommend this one. Get this one at Target before it goes out of print or at your big box store or online if available. This is one worth seeking out. It's a very good light gateway game that I think you're really going to enjoy, especially if you're a Bob Ross fan. This is the famous Bob Ross Art of Chill game. And nobody gets more famous than Bob Ross, I am sure. It's a nice standard white size box. It's, it's a very good size. You'll see when you come in, you can see all of his materials that he has that he'll be using in the game, you know, abstractly, of course. You're going to have a rule book, an easel. This is really nice. This plastic easel that kind of sets up. And you'll be able to put the paintings from the game in the easel. And that looks a really nice. That's a really nice presentation. You're going to have plenty of these paintings. They're double-sided, which is nice. They're not great material, but they're going to be sitting there. So it's not really a huge big deal. Everybody will have these palettes. And although the, you know, they look kind of blank, they do have the outline of three cards there. And they do kind of look like an artist palette, which is really cool. This is going to be the scoring that you'll have here. You'll put the chill cards that are going on and kind of the scoring thing for four players. Uh, it's, it's pretty good uh, little scoring mechanism. Here are the art supply cards. They're a little undersized. Uh, probably not the best quality I've ever seen in a card. Uh, but you can kind of see what's up here. Just the color and the type of paintbrush. Really, that's what you're looking at here. Uh, not the best quality, but for a mass market game, I think it's doing fairly well. You can see a small attempt here at a custom insert. This is just how the cardboard is shaped, but you have places where you can put things. These little squares you'll use in the scoring. These are fairly cheap. You'll have a regular cube that will be out. Probably my favorite component is the Bob Ross component you'll be competing against. The die is uh, put on there. It's not. You don't have to stick it yourself. It's fine. And then you'll have these little chill cards that you'll be using. They all use the same artwork on the same picture of Bob. And they'll say different things. And you do get a nice little quote from him. So that's a nice little touch. These are okay. Not the best of quality, to be honest. But for a mass market game, not bad. You also have these technique cards, which you'll be scoring during the game. And everything is a little bit thinner than I like to see. But, eh, you can live with it. Here is Bob Ross, Art of Chill, the... Instruction manual. You're going to get a little bit here about the setup. There is a video you can go watch and you'll have the game overview, which is fairly nice. You can see everything's black with the white writing, which I think works. So the first thing you'll do in the turn is roll the dice. This gives you everything you need to do when you roll the dice. There's a nice reference page. And then here you'll perform an action afterwards. It goes through each of the actions. I felt like it was really good. I would probably just go through a scoring when you get there. That way you can jump into the game a little bit sooner. And it gives you examples of kind of how the palette board works, which is nice. Then on the back, you're going to get a quick reference, and you're going to get how to finish the painting in, in the game. And nice little information here about Bob Ross. One thing to notice here, which is great, 
So as soon as a player reaches the chill space on the chill meter, the game ends and that player is the winner. But let's face it, you're playing a Bob Ross game, so really, everyone's a winner. Thanks, Bob Ross. So I'm going to show you how to play the game, but just to kind of get you an idea of the flow of the game, not every single rule in the game per se. I've kind of scrunched everything together to get it on screen here. Here are going to be the four technique cards you'll have access to, and the four art supply cards that you'll have access to. The scoring board with a chill, and you got your easel here and your palette over here. The first thing you'll do is you'll have Bob Ross set up, and you'll be competing against him. If he ever makes it into this track, then he's finished, and you'll move on to the next painting. Or if somebody painted all three of these that are on here, then that painting will be finished. Move on to the next one. So the first thing I do on each turn is you're going to roll the dice and do what it says. I'll show you each of these. This will give you one action. You can go ahead and take right now. This one will allow you to draw a card from the art supply. The, you take the, the, one, the random one from the top of the deck. Uh, you'll also see that you will have... The palette. This means you can place one of your cards onto the palette immediately. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. And the Bob Ross, which is going to be the majority of the ones on here. So what you're going to do with him is you're going to take one of these chill cards and you will put it into play. Some of these will be something you'll do once and some will be ongoing powers. Do not move Bob forward. He's just chilling. So that's just one that does absolutely nothing. When this card is revealed, all players may draw an art supplies card from the top of the deck. When this card is revealed, all players may play a paint to their palette. Players may take an extra action. This one's going to be ongoing. So you're always getting an extra action until there's not a chill card. When the card is revealed, the players may play a paint to their palette. So this will allow you to do different things, and everybody normally will do it. Then you'll move Bob Ross up when he's rolled on the dice, and that's how he'll progress. If he covers up one of these bonus ones, then that bonus will no longer be available. And once again, if he gets all the way to the end, then this painting is over and nobody else can score it, which really stinks if you have paint on your palette. After you roll the dice, you will have access to three actions unless something gives you more. The first thing you do is take an art supply card. You can take one of these face-up cards or a random one from the top of the deck. Think ticket to ride right here. The second possible action is will utilize your palette. If you had a card in your hand, you may put it on your palette. That would be an action. I'll explain why you would do this in just a couple moments. Another thing you could do for an action is if you had cards on your palette, you can totally discard them and go with something else. Now, wh why you might do that is because if this painting is done and you kind of started trying to get this brown or blue, green, and white, and that painting went away, and next one doesn't have that combination, you'll have to just get rid of it. So you'll wash your palette. For an action, also, you can get rid of all the art supply cards that are face up and put out four new ones, giving you, hopefully, different options. You can also earn a technique card. Here's really good. So let's say I had two yellow cards in my hand. I can discard these two cards out of the game and pick up this technique card. What that will immediately do is allow me to score two points on the chill. I will get two chill points. And then every time I finish a part of a painting with yellow, I will get an additional point when I score. And there will be each of the options in the game will be very red and different types of brushes and things. The last one is paint a feature. This is going to be uh, really with the grunt of the game here, what you're trying to do. So each painting will have three different options of different combinations. So here you need yellow, white, and blue, and this type of paintbrush. You can see the different options. Now this is Fluffy Clouds. If I get that before Bob gets here, I get two additional points for doing it. And when you finish one, you will always get a number of chill points equal to how many different paint colors. So one, two, three. I would utilize three paint, I would get three points. If I got this bonus, I would get five. And if I had this technique card in front of me, I would get six points for completing this section. So there are a couple rules to how the palette will work. So remember, I needed yellow, white, and blue. If I had that down on this palette, and then I played the brush that's required, I would discard the brush, I would discard these, and then I would be able to complete this fluffy cloud. I could have also done that if the blue and the white and the yellow was on this side. That would be fine. I could discard all of these and I would complete the cloud. But if I had a green here, I couldn't have accomplished it. Because whenever you have a palette side, here's A and here's B, these are considered mixed together. So if yellow and green is mixed together, then I couldn't utilize that yellow. If I had this, 
I could definitely mix it. I would just discard these and leave these where they're at. If I had this set up, once again, I could just take this side off, keep that there, and I would be fine. So that's kind of how the palette works. So just think about these as mixing colors, and I will utilize that. When your scoring marker gets to chill, that means you win the game, and you will be able to tell everybody you're friends with Bob Ross. Who should buy this game? I think anybody who likes painting. If you're into painting, this theme is going to strike out at you. If you like light games, to get the ride level type games, this is one you should strike out. If you're a Bob Ross fan, be, go grab this game if you like Bob Ross. This game was designed for you. Now, this game is light enough to be played with any family members. Non-gamers will be able to pick this up pretty quick. If they can pick up Ticket to Ride, they can pick up this game. I think kids, maybe kids who are into art would like this. Uh, gamers will like this as a change of pace, something a little bit lighter. So it's going to strike a lot of chords with a lot of different people. Bob Ross, Art of Chill, going to recommend it. Keeper, I think you'll like it too. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel. Let's us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, and I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching, and everybody else, keep playing games.